Good morning, folks. Here's the sun diving comet we saw yesterday, slowly creeping up and will be visible on its final approach in a few hours. We've had a number of good news releases the last day, and a couple events of note as well. Let's start with our star over at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding a very calm day, no eruptive activity in Earth-facing positions. Coronal holes pepper the disk with a large plasma filament still just south of them. It is an Earth-directed position today, so it will need to be monitored. Only CME was a filament that took off on the northwest departing limb near the northern reach. That one sunspot we noted yesterday indeed kept the small X-ray events going, but nothing more intense. The sunspots have doubled in number and the active region tripled in size, but the only magnetic mixing thus far is back there at the rear. Solar wind is still calm at Earth, but these coronal holes have already set more intense streams our way. Impact from one of them couldn't be much more than 36 hours away. Interesting story out from the NRAO. They have found that certain cosmic jets don't escape into long cosmic structures, but get trapped inside the blown-out shell preceding the collapse, and it energizes the entire bubble and produces some interesting emissions. Perhaps something a bit more relatable. For all the deep space imagery we get, it appears the radio, infrared, and X-ray electromagnetic wavelengths are primary. Well, now we have the best visible light image of another star. Using the very large array here in New Mexico, they focused on a red giant that appears to have major surface discontinuities, like huge turbulent bubbles on the surface. Interesting study of Mars water loss turns out that only some of the water was lost to space. Their basalt can hold 25% more water than earthly basalt, and they say that a huge amount, if not most of the Martian hydrology, is now hidden underground. A single image obtained by Keck is throwing a wrench in some cosmic theories. They know central galactic mass is directly related to the mass of the entire galaxy, but the further they look into the past, the more mass discrepancies can be found. Turns out the central mass sets in before the galaxy builds as a whole, and the energetics of the central quasar may be the controlling factor in star formation, which, by the way, is supposed to be a job for dark matter, but his absenteeism has been world class. Top weather event of the last day was a winter storm battering North Atlantic, to the point they had to evacuate the majority of some of the islands. Today, our focus comes right back to the Philippines, where one storm has moved out and another is right on the doorstep. Eyes open there as the departing system already caused major flash flooding across almost the entire nation of Brunei. Folks, the inspiration stories continue. You've already heard how Terence Allen attended the last conference to learn how to predict earthquakes. He won this year's forecasting contest a few months later. Ferris Walt, age 14, came with his father and was fascinated by the Earth-Sun weather connections. He won the National Middle School Science Championship for a project on coronal holes and cyclone formation a few months later. And now we have Britton Beckham, inspired by the prepping lifestyle and the legitimately horrifying prognosis of Earth's future, and he built a prepping app. Tons of resources, lists, and tools, some coming right from our own community. Inspiration to do something, build something, win awards, or progress in science. The most important topics at layman's level understanding come out to Observing the Frontier 2018 in Albuquerque, February 16th through the 18th. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Website members, you've got Deeper Look episodes 98 and 99 to watch. We greatly appreciate your support, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5.35 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.